Hi there and welcome to this lesson. Today we're going to look at how to read the analog clock and how to say it using our words, tell the time using words. So uh, let's do a quick recap of what we know so far. We know that the big hand on the analog clock is uh, represents the minutes and we know that the small hand on the analog clock shows us the hours. We know that the hours are determined by the big numbers that are around the clock and we know that the minutes actually measure um, five minute intervals between the big numbers that are the hours. So if I was to move my minute hand from the 12 across to the one, it would have been five minutes. And if I was to move it from the one down to the two, it will have been 10 minutes. So five minutes between what 12 and one, five minutes between uh, one and two, five minutes between two and three and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly have a look at um, what it means. Uh, how do we know when an hour starts? So at what point does an hour actually start? We have one hour here, two, three, four. How do we know when that number, when that one hour actually starts? And the way that we know that the one hour actually starts is when this minute hand gets to the 12 or goes past the 12. So if I make this hour hand point up at the one and I make this minute hand point up at the 12, it means that this hour is just about to begin. And the time that we read when we, when we see this on a clock is one o'clock. If this one minute, this hour minute hand was to travel all the way around the clock and this our hand was now pointing here, we would then be able to say that the second hour is about to begin. And therefore, this is two o'clock. If the hour minute hand traveled round and round and round the clock and it many, many times, and now our big hand was pointing up again at the 12, and our small hand, our hour hand, is pointing down at the six we know that it's just become six o'clock and the sixth hour is about to begin. So that's nice and easy. Six o'clock, which means this one here would be seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and then 12 o'clock. But what if the time isn't an o'clock? What if it's not time for a new hour to begin? How do we actually go about saying that? What we need to do is we need to have a look at our clock and we need to divide it into two main parts. So what we're going to do is put a line straight down the middle and we're gonna color one side of it orange and one side of it pink. The pink side, sorry, the orange side of the clock is going to be our past side. So that means that anything that's on the orange side or any time the, the big hand is on the orange side, the time is going to be read as something past the hour. The side that is pink is going to be our two side. And so once we get past the orange side, we're going to start counting how many minutes until the next hour. So two completely different focuses when we read this time. For example, if I put my hour hand back on, and this time I'm going to point it just after the four. So it's not quite on the four at the moment because it's not going to be four o'clock. It's going to be just after the four. And I'm going to place my minute hand pointing here at the two. So I've got my hours and my minute hand. So what I need to do is I need to look at, I know that when this minute hand was pointing at the 12, it was four o'clock. But now the minute hand has traveled past the four o'clock, but I need to work out how far past. And I know that I have five minutes between each of the big numbers. So this would mean that I have gone five, 10, 10 minutes past four. So I know that I've gone 10 minutes past four. So this one here, we would say is 10 
past four. If you were to write that normally, you would have written that as four, ten. So ten past four is the same as four ten. If I was to move my minute hand, if I was to change the hour, and let's say I'm going to change the hour to it's just after the one, and I'm going to put my minute hand down here at the five. So we're still on the orange side of the sheet, so the, this, this half of the clock. So we know that it's going to be a past time. So we need to work out what hour it is that it's just gone past. So the hour that it's just gone past is one. So it's the, the hour hand has just gone past the one. So we know it's going to be past one, but we need to know how far past one. So we're going to count our minutes again. We've going to go five, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes. So the time on this clock is 25 past one. Or if you were going to write this in our normal time, you would say that the hour is 1 and that the minutes is 25. So that's how we determine whether it's a past time. What about if the minute hand, however, is pointing at the 8? We're no longer on the orange side of the clock. No longer on the orange side. So we're no longer dealing with past. We're now looking at how far to or until the next hour. So we know that this one here is going to be a two time. So in order to do this, what I need to look at is when will the next hour occur? Well, the next hour is going to occur when this minute hand gets back to the 12. So we're going to count how many minutes until it gets back to the 12 for the next hour. So we've got 5, 10, 15, and 20. So it's going to be 20 minutes until the next hour. If the hour hand is between the 1 and the 2, what is going to be the next hour? Well, it's already gone past the 1, so the next hour is going to be 2. So that means that the time on this clock is 20 to 2. If I was to write that normally, I would have written that as 1 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, as 140. So you can see that writing on the, the way we read the two side of, of the clock is very different to the way that we read the past side of the clock. When we write our time normally, we look at the number, the hour that it is at that time. So it's still 1, 1, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, or 1. Uh, 10, 1, 15, something like that. So a 1 something all the way up until it hits 2. But when we're reading it out in words, we are looking at to see whether it's closest to the 1 o'clock or the 2 o'clock time. And that's how we do the reading. Let's do another one. If, let's move my hour hand this time. I'm going to put my hour hand over here. And I'm going to put my minute hand pointing up at the 11. So... In this one, I know that it's on the pink side of the clock, so it's going to be a two time. But I need to know how many minutes till the next hour. So I'm going to go five. Five minutes to the next hour. And I, then I need to have a look at the hour hand and go, what is the next hour? It's just gone past the three, and it's heading towards the four, so the next hour is going to be four. So this time in words is five to four. If I was going to write it in the normal time, I have to look at what hour it still is. So in the normal time, I know that the hour is still three. And how many minutes past three? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 minutes. So it's three, 55. There are just a few more special things that we need to talk about when it comes to time. So it's two, just a couple of special times that we read just that little bit differently. To show you this though, I'm going to divide the clock one more time this way and this way. 
So if you have a look at the lines that I've drawn on the clock, you should see that I've cut it into quarters. So if I've cut it into quarters, there are just a couple of very, very special times that we can read. If our hour hand, and we're going to draw a permanent one in now, if the hour hand is permanently, slightly thicker line, permanently sitting at or near the one, so that's our short hour hand, is sitting here. If I put my minute hand back in and I point it up at the 12, we know that that time there is going to be one o'clock. It's a little bit crooked because I've drawn it a little bit crooked, but it's going to be one o'clock. If I move my minute hand past the one o'clock and go into the hour of one, but I go as far as the three, I have moved my hand a quarter past three. So this one here is a quarter past, uh, quarter past one, sorry. Oh my goodness. So quarter past, a quarter past, and how, which hour is it, has it gone a quarter past? It's gone a quarter past one because my hour, hour hand is at one. So this is what we read as a quarter past one. If I move my out minute hand another, uh, all the way down here, and so in the, another quarter past, we don't say it's two quarters past three, uh, quarters, two quarters past one. We say that it is now half past one. And it's a half because it's now traveled halfway round the clock. And the last one we need to look at is if we travel around the clock another quarter, we don't say that it's three quarters past because looking at the clock, we are now into the pink zone. So we're into the two zone. We need to look at it how far to the next hour, how much left of the clock is right there to travel. It is a quarter. So we read this one as a quarter to, and it's not going to be a quarter to one because we've already gone past one. The next hour that we're heading to over here is a quarter to two. Okay, uh, I hope that has helped you out. So key things to note, we looked at hours, minutes. We looked at what the clock looks like when it's an o'clock time. We looked at what the clock looks like when it's a past time and what the clock looks like when it's a two time. We also looked at the differences and similarities between how we write time normally and how we would say it in words. And then we looked at special times like a quarter past, a half past, and then a quarter two. Good luck.